Great friends, welcome back to SNT Health and Environment for 13th week. We are going to deliberate three issues. So one is acreage for GM crops, that is genetically modified crops across the world dipped for the first time in 2015. For the first time in 2015, this area under genetically modified crops dipped by around 1%. That is not important issue, but we are going to deliberate on pros and cons of GM crops. Second important point is India wants to showcase various adaptation measures taken to combat global warming with a view to demand more funds from Green Climate Fund. And what is meant by Green Climate Fund and what are the adaptation measures taken by India? We are going to deliberate on these. Then Ministry of Health and Family Welfare amended the Drugs and Cosmetics Rules. This is minor issue. Anyhow, we are going to deliberate this also. First one is area under GM crops. GM crops are genetically modified crops. What is meant by genetic modification? We are going to look at it a little later. And area under cultivation for genetically modified crops dipped for the first time in 2015. And here I would like to tell you one particular point with regard to genetically modified crops. This genetically modified crops are highly popular in North and South Americas. That means American continent as a whole, the big countries like United States of America, Argentina, then Brazil, they have gone in for this genetically modified crops in a big way, whereas the several countries in Europe are dead against GM crops, especially GM food crops. But this GM food crops are extensively grown in North America and South America, especially three big agricultural produce countries like United States of America, Argentina and Brazil. And the area reduced from around 448 million acres in 2014 to around 444 million acres in 2015. There is a reduction of 1%. And please don't forget, only three countries, that is USA, Brazil and Argentina, account for more than 75% of this. So, three countries in the world constitute more than 75% of genetically modified crops acreage and predominantly four crops are grown with this genetic modification. The four crops are corn, then soya bean, please look into this picture, corn, soya bean, then comes cotton, cotton is extensively grown in our country also, that is the BT cotton, then in India, this mustard recently thought of introducing mustard crop with genetic modification, but because of lot of resistance from environmental groups that was withdrawn. And across the world, the fourth most important crop grown with genetic modification is canola. Right? Please look into this. These are canola seeds and flower. And these four crops are predominantly grown, as I have already told you. USA, Brazil and Argentina account for more than three quarters of the genetically modified crops. Right? So, with this, we are going to deliberate what exactly is a genetic modification. Genetic modification is nothing but transfer of genes within and across the species boundaries to produce improved organisms. Here, what is done is, certain enzymes which can cut pieces of DNA of one organism. That means one organism's DNA is cut and introduced into DNA of another organism. And this is done with a certain type of enzymes. And enzymes are nothing but proteins which speed up chemical reaction. And with the help of enzymes, pieces of DNA are cut and introduced into DNA of another organism. And you may ask what is the DNA? DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid and it is the material inside the nucleus of cells carrying genetic information. So, genetic information is modified with the cutting of a piece of DNA from other organism and placing it into another organism. So, that traits are totally modified in this process of genetic modification, right? And 
why this genetic modification is done especially genetic modification is done keeping in mind to make the crop resistant for certain stresses if you look at uh, abiotic stresses i am introducing two words what is abiotic the other one is the biotic abiotic is lifeless biotic is living organisms organisms which have life or biotic substances abiotic or they do not have life stones no life then like that mountains no life so the lifeless substances or this abiotic components biotic components are living organisms insects viruses pathogens so these are biotic so so as to make the crop resistant to abiotic stresses as well as biotic what are the abiotic stresses abiotic stresses are the crop should resist drought conditions extreme temperatures extreme salinity to make crop resist these type of abiotic stresses is increasing the resistance abiotically this is one part of genetic modification the second part is to increase the biotic resistance that is resistance to insects viruses and pathogens particular insect should not attack the crop particular virus should not attack the crop that is the purpose of increasing the resistance biotically then third one is to increase the nutritional value of food crops this is highly relevant if you look at developing countries and under developed countries then for production of recombinant medicines medicines are taken from two different species medicines manufactured from two different species or recombinant medicines so as to manufacture recombinant medicines this genetic modification is required so with the genetic modification farmers will be benefited that is one point of view and the environmentalists say that there are several disadvantages of this genetic modification we are going to deliberate on pros and cons right friends so what are the view points as told by proponents of genetically modified crops what the proponents say the proponents say high crop yields supplement the income of farmers and this will benefit the farmers in developing countries who are primarily doing subsistence agriculture what is meant by subsistence agriculture subsistence agriculture is basically hand to mouth existence there is not much left agriculture is not being done on commercial scale that is subsistence agriculture at the same time it will ensure food security to growing millions of world population if the food production is increased through this genetic modification second important point is they reduce the need for pesticides and herbicides because they themselves are resistant for these and at the same time as i have already told you they will resist drought conditions they will resist high or extreme temperatures and the third one is food quality and shelf life can be increased the life of the vegetables the fruits if it is increased then it will immensely benefit country like india because in our country proper cold storage facilities are not available and a substantial portion of vegetables and fruits are lost every year because of improper storage facilities so under these circumstances if the shelf life is increased then it will immensely benefit developing countries like india gm crops can be engineered to withstand weather fluctuations and extremes in our country we are facing serious conditions of drought for the past 2 years and at the same time extreme temperatures in one or the other parts of the country we are seeing and with the genetic modification crops can be made resistant to these type of things so extreme variations in temperature and extreme drought conditions can be tackled with genetic modification then they can be engineered to increase the nutrients in developing countries small nutrition is the problem so these can be engineered to increase the nutrients 
and this is most relevant for developing countries and the recent example is development of golden rice with vitamin A. Right? So, these are the viewpoints of uh, proponents of GM crops. What the opponents say? A larger debate is going on with regard to the effects on human health and the scientific evidence so far has not proved that they are detrimental to human health, but there is a fear in one country or other country that genetic modification may lead to emergence of new diseases in humans in future. There were cases which triggered allergy in human beings because of this genetic modification, this DNA of one organism is injected into other organism. So, here different species is created, sometimes it may create allergic reaction in human beings. Organisms in the ecosystem is harmed. We are looking at making insecticide resistance, pesticide resistance and at the same time herbicide resistance. But at the same time, the point which we are missing is by removing one pest which harms our crops, the food chain is being broken, which may hamper biodiversity. Some of the organisms may be extinct in due course of time, which is not good for the ecosystem as a whole. Then because of patent rights, only few companies are enjoying monopoly in genetically modified crops. If you look at the companies, which are into genetic modification. Only few companies like Monsanto, Syngenta are among the leading players and it may lead to exploitation in developing countries. If you look at the last point, in due course of time, these GM crops may develop resistance to insecticides and agriculture may become costly at that juncture. Right? So, these are the pros and cons of GM crops. India is trading cautiously. Having allowed GM crops in cotton, India so far not allowed genetic modification in any of the food crops. But if you look at the growing requirements of food crops in the near future across the world, allowing genetic modification may be the need of the hour either today or tomorrow. But the adverse consequences are to be investigated in detail before allowing these crops. Second point. India wants to showcase various adaptation measures taken to combat global warming with a view to demand more funds from Green Climate Fund. All of you are well aware, carbon dioxide is the largest greenhouse gas followed by methane and the COP21 summit was held in Paris from November 30 last year and the Paris Pact is going to be ratified at New York on 22nd April. At Paris, in COP21 summit, the countries came to the understanding with regard to carbon emissions. Now, this is going to be ratified in New York on 22nd April and more than 130 countries are going to ratify and India is one among them. And here, India wants to showcase its adaptation measures, the measures taken by India during the past one or two years with regard to reducing carbon emissions so that government can demand more funds from Green Climate Fund. What is Green Climate Fund? Green Climate Fund is the fund under which developed countries are expected to contribute $100 billion annually from 2020 onwards. So, this is the meaning of Green Climate Fund and out of that $100 billion from 2020 and India wants to showcase its achievements so that it can ask more funds from Green Climate Fund. And at the same time, please don't forget, Green Climate Fund in India is maintained by NABAD. That means the nodal agency is NABAD. And at the same time, please don't forget, the largest emitter of greenhouse gases is China. And USA is ahead if you look at the per capita emissions. And you may ask, what are the adaptation measures? So, as to reduce carbon emissions as going to be put forward by India. First and the foremost is renewable energy program of 175 gigawatt by 2022, which include 100 gigawatt solar and 60 gigawatt wind power. So, this is a massive program from Indian perspective. Second is implementation of a clean environment CES. 
All of you are well aware this was increased to rupees 400 per ton of coal in recent budget and this implementation of clean environment says basically to discourage use of coal and this is increased from 200 rupees to 400 rupees. Government wants to showcase this point that we have taken measures to discourage usage of coal. Then provision of 5 crore new LPG connections. All of you are well aware government wants to give new LPG connections during the next 3 years and migrating to Bharat 6 fuel standards by 1st April 2020. Previous target was 2024 but government preponed it to 2020 and government wants to showcase this also because with the Bharat 6 fuel standards the emissions will reduce. Then distribution of 8 and of crore LED bulbs in shortest possible time so as to improve energy efficiency. So these are the adaptation measures taken by India and India wants to showcase at the Paris Pact so as to claim more funds from Green Climate Fund. Right friends, look at the last one and the minor event that is Ministry of Health and Family Welfare amended the drugs and cosmetics rules. That means if the drug is tested in another country on animals and that country should be part of OECD and now retesting is not required. And when the data on animal toxicity has already been approved by the regulatory authority of another country, then again retesting these studies in animals in our country is not required. And this saves a lot of time for drug companies and it is also a victory for animal rights activists. That means when the testing is done in another country with regard to the introduction of a drug, retesting in our country is not required. Right? So animal rights activists are happy, drug companies are also happy with this regulation. Right friends, with this let us conclude SNT, health and environment. Please do join for news analysis and other modules. Have a nice day. Thank you.